Good morning. So welcome to the day 8. Today is the 8th day. So welcome to day 8. And today we shall be talking about congenital heart disease part 2. Now see, yesterday in congenital heart disease, right, the way we divided it into two parts, the asynotic and the cyanotic. That's how we divided it. So we finished this asynotic yesterday and that the synotic part is what will remain in our focus for today. Now see asynotic in which we talked about ASD, VSD, PDA, patent ductus arteriosus and coarctation of aorta. Right? All these things, they were pretty neat, pretty easy. Right? Things were very clear that what exactly is happening. What today you will be watching, it will be like a combination. It would be a combination and that combination is so interesting because you have to think from multiple aspects. So today, what you have to do is, you have to think in two ways. See, abnormality is there. It is not so that the moment that fetus takes birth and instantly all these abnormalities would start. No, it never. it's never like that. Say for example, if there is some problem in say left ventricle, right? So that left ventricle problem is there right from the beginning, right? So even in fetal life also there is a problem and this problem would persist even after birth. So how the fetus is managing this abnormality during the fetal life and what really happens when that fetus takes birth and what happens what are the changes hemodynamic changes right one very interesting good question which was asked yesterday was that asd or vsd i mean any of the any of the abnormalities can they be diagnosed by ecg right and then we can treat it well think it like this that when we say that's the heart right that's our heart and and if this is ast right that means this much tissue space is deficient now this tissue space will lead to so many things right so many shunts because yesterday we saw that that all these are left to right shunt the blood from left side is going on to the right side and that's because left side is high pressure system and due to this all all other other hemodynamic changes and everything is getting developed but will it make any change in the ecg well actually asd won't make any change because it is very less tissue to make any significant change in the current right it, it would be very less but yes the other effects you can really watch that when there is enlargement of any chamber right that is what you'll be able to see whenever there would be any say change in the circulatory system so that you'll be able to see on x-ray and always the echocardiogram right echo 2d and 3d they will be the diagnostic modality which would stamp the diagnosis right? so let's say today i'll be showing you some very interesting x-rays also and there are interesting names associated with like say boot sign and then egg on a string sign right? and, and it actually looks like that okay so let's start with our today's session the cyanotic congenital heart disease in other words this is right to left shunt right to left shunt so right side which is having co2 and left side which is having o2 this is right to left shunt it means that that carbon dioxide which was supposed to go to pulmonary circulation will now be entering into the systemic circulation that is into the body 
and as soon as that oxygen level it drops below 80 percent it leads to bluish discoloration right to lead to that bluish discoloration that is what we call as cyanosis obviously these bluish discoloration would be most prominent in those areas which are having very thin skin right so in in those fingers on the lips right that's where it would be very prominent okay so let's see what are the conditions which we'll be looking at and these are the five best classic conditions which will be looking at in depth now i'll tell you this is like all permutation combination after today's session you will find that whatever is possible everything can be done by nature right as we'll go from tetralogy of fellow to transposition of great vessels persistent truncus arteriosus hypoplastic left heart syndrome and then total anomalous pulmonary venous return right from the top to bottom as you will progress you will find that complexity is increasing like anything so many things are getting added one after the another right but it is fun basic principle remains the same as i told say told you on the first day all you need to think is where is the problem right where is that abnormality what is happening to the pressure system and what would really happen in the form of shunt that is blood would be going which blood would be going from where to where once you understand this things are pretty easy well as they are combination right to left shunts they are combination so you'll find that along with one problem there would there are many associated problem say for example yesterday we learnt vst ventricular septal defect so ventricular septal defect stand alone ventricular septal defect fine it was good but in tetralogy of fallot also vsd would come now when the question comes that if the vsd comes and yesterday we said that vsd is left to right shunt same thing with today also we are learning and in right to left shunt how is it possible right that's what we'll understand because when the combination start coming up when more than one condition persist the entire pressure system would change and this is the reason that most of the condition yeah most of the conditions they'll be requiring surgical intervention many people survive right in very late stage they come to know that they have got ast or they have got vst but in any of these things tetralogy of fellow or transposition of great vessels in some cases so if you don't do surgery within one week right person won't survive say for example even in tetralogy of fellow in this if you don't do the surgery hardly anyone would reach to his adult life hardly right they have to die there is no option because there are so many combinations so let's see one by one and then this was just for the for your information it is like vascular malformation that is vascular tumors and it arteriovenous malformation this is for the understanding right we'll just be talking briefly about it and say today is day eight right tomorrow we'll be discussing pharmacology pharmac now this this pharmacology will be related to cardiac pharmacology right now in this actually we'll be discussing all those mechanisms etc but what what in my mind is that whether you are in first year or you are in second year pharmacology is quite tricky and and people say that you have to really cram the thing that's why just after one or two days break immediately we'll be starting a new series now this series would be you'll be very happy to know that we'll be talking about the complete basics the complete basics that is how all the receptors so basically it is like on autonomic nervous system in which we'll be talking about sympathetic parasympathetic all the receptors all the neurotransmitters where exactly they act how will you really see that 
few of the medicines they will be inhibiting the sympathetic system few will be stimulating the sympathetic system same thing for the parasympathetic system right what exactly happens in some specific condition so all those things in in a very nice complete package right will be same way we'll be discussing every day and just let me know if we can do it this way so there is no limit of learning right so if i am putting my time i i expect that you also pump your time so we can have can we have something like this that we do two lectures two sessions a day right and say you guys have been so sincere and so disciplined that normally say it is like when the session is for say over one hour so then it people find it bit uncomfortable but you have been so sincere so good because i was watching that such a good discipline so one and half hour and let's say second session of one hour can we do this right say i want to give you as much as possible so if we can have two such sessions first session will be a bit long and the second session just after the break of about say half an hour and then once again we meet in the second session what we'll do is here we'll learn some basic principles right about any of them or, or all those systems we'll understand the basic principles right and then immediately why to wait for the next day right uh okay thank you so much so uh, in the first portion we'll be understanding the basic principle and in the second portion we'll we'll learn the implementation right else we can very well take it next day but next day what happens that in case let's say for some reason you missed that revision and and when the revision is not done some portion gets evaporated when it goes away and then suddenly you find it difficult that what exactly we were trying to discuss why to why to take that chance right so just let me know if this thing is good right we can without further delay right immediately just you have to give me a day a day or two maximum and i'll plan out everything and i'll i'll send the links and everything over here only right very nice so it's an awesome response thank you so much right i am happy okay chalo so let's start with tetralogy of fell in exam say at mbbs level no one would tell you that yes you tell me about the surgical steps of the correction of tetralogy of fell no no one would ask and and when we are discussing the topic it looks like yes it is so simple it is easy to remember but when everything is combined then we start forgetting so that's why we'll rely only on the images because images they can easily be remembered right so that's why you i hope everyone must be keeping some page something to write so what whenever i draw something you also start drawing it so this would be the best way to remember so over here in tetralogy right so it means we are dealing with four things and the, yes there is pentalogy also but pentalogy later first let's see what exactly are the four things which are getting combined in this congenital heart disease which is giving right to left shunt okay so here is our schematic graph diagram and like our normal this is right atrium left atrium right ventricle left ventricle and over here this thing will go for pulmonary trunk and this thing would go for aorta right over here pulmonary veins yeah there are four pulmonary veins but this is schematic so we are just writing and over here it is SVC and IVC, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. That's our tricuspid valve, and this is our mitral valve. Yeah, there are valves over here also, pulmonary valve and aortic valves. This much. Now I change the color. What's happening in tetralogy of fellow? First thing first, there is pulmonary valve stenosis. 
So start making the changes over here. Here is the pulmonary valve stenosis. So it means that outflow track, right? It is stenosed. Right? Now the blood which is going, which was going easily from right ventricle out, now it is stenosed. So that's the first thing. Obviously, we don't have to remember because whenever there is stenosis, it means the chamber which is just behind it, it has to work so much that it would be, you have guessed it right, it would be hypertrophied. Right ventricle, right? So in right ventricle, they have got big muscle mass, so it would be hypertrophied, right? Had it been right atrium, so we would call it right atrial enlargement, right? Whenever there is right atrial enlargement, what we do see in this ECG? biphasic wave right and then that biphasic p wave right that wave when we call it biphasic because when this part is more than one small box right and say this would be like right atrial enlargement similarly for the left atrial why it is happening because that lead this is what you see into v1 correct v1 because v1 is watching straight the heart the straight way so when it watches that from the right side the current is coming, so it is up deflection, and when it is going for the between going for the left side, so it would be the downward deflection. Uh, yeah, stenosis. Yeah, I'll I'll talk about it. So stenosed means narrowing, right? Stenosis means narrowing. So when we have, let's say this is a valve. This valve is opening full. So the blood is going, right? And and then then when when blood tries to go back, that valve will close so that there is no back flow. If the flow is going back, we call it regurgitation, right? We talked about it, regurgitation. So a few words say stenosis. Whenever the word stenosis comes, it means narrowing, narrowing, right? And when it comes regurgitation, whether that regurgitation is, is about valves or it is regurgitation of esophagus, regurgitation means going in the reverse direction, right? In reverse, reverse direction. So right now, when we say pulmonary stenosis, that means the output track, output track of right ventricle that is narrowed down so this is narrowed this one this is our first thing the effect of it comes on the musculature of right ventricle so straight away now our right ventricle is into the gym and he has developed some good muscles right so this is right ventricular hypertrophy then the nature kicks in nature would say let's see something is to be done what would be the disadvantage? Let's say, let's forget about the third and fourth part right now. Right? If this thing really happens, what would really happen to the patient? Right? What would happen to that li little kid? See, so bad. Right? He'll be in such big trouble. Everything good, right? And uh, say lungs are good. So lungs said that, yes, I am sending a good blood reached from here to left ventricle. Yes, reached from here. It is going to aorta. Yes, body is happy. And then that blood will go all the way to the body and used. And then it is sent back by superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, received by right atrium, from right atrium via this wall, reached to right ventricle. And then this right ventricle is trying to squeeze this blood. It is trying to push this blood onto the pulmonary trunk. Right? Pulmonary trunk. Now here is the narrowing. Here is the narrow. So it means the pressure would start rising over here. Now though the blood for one round it was okay. But now there is very less blood which is going to the lungs. Very less blood going into the lungs. And this chamber is now expanding. This chamber is now under pressure. That's a trouble. Right? So this is what would really happen. That there would be severe 
restriction of flow of blood on to the pulmonary side to the lungs now here is we add the third component the ventricular septal defect now let's say normally what was happening when there was only ventricular septal defect only the vsd when there was only vsd things were something like this right this was this was the ventricular septal defect simply this is high pressure system this is low pressure system because the, why this is high this is the left side and the left ventricle is always a powerful muscle right so and it has to push the blood into the entire body so here it will push the blood from left side to right side and that was left to right shunt but now things are different now it is not like this over here because of this stenosed the pressure is rising heavily on the right side and now we introduce into this the ventricular septal defect in fact ventricular septal defect vsd is a life saver is a life saver this pressure right will now be exceeding the pressure of left ventricle and the blood would be pushed on this side all right so it will be pushed so this is right to left shunt this is right to left shunt that's what really happens okay so that is ventricular septal defect now these three things they are usually present together so if there is pulmonary wall stenosis right ventricular hypertrophy it is the after effect of that pulmonary stenosis and the ventricular septal defect what exactly is this overriding of aorta now see overriding of aorta you have to go back to our concept when we were discussing the anatomy right how was it happening see there was truncus arteriosus if you remember truncus arteriosus that truncus arteriosus which was giving the formation of aorta and the pulmonary trunk right and then the that aorto pulmonary segment was forming and then the twist so that though aorta is emerging on the right side but it is emerging from the left ventricle so from left ventricle it goes and then it is crossed by pulmonary trunk right because of that septa aorto pulmonary septum and then the whole thing twists what if the aorta right the aorta which is to be emerging from left ventricle now it is overriding it is overriding the right ventricle it is overriding the right ventricle it means portion of the aorta it is it is like this say i'll just erase this small portion right this and aorta is there but now the aorta is is you can say is like this is like this this is overriding the right ventricle it means the blood from this high pressure system it can go directly into this that is what is called as the overriding of aorta though this finding is variable right this finding is variable but that's how it goes okay on top of it if there is asd also associated it means if this much was less so then even asd also comes into picture so then we call it pentology of fellow this is pentology of fellow so these are the five findings as such the four that is tetralogy but if asd is also present so if asd is present so then actually it happens like this right atrium and left atrium right their pressure depending upon the pressure blood would be shifting from here to here or here to here because the actual the pressure system would be developing here as right ventricle develops high pressure then the right atrium enlargement would occur so in that case blood would start shifting from right to left on both the sides right okay and then there is aorta right and if there is a overriding aorta so even the blood will be going again it is right to left shunt so see the dynamics now they are becoming bit complex what really happens yeah 
I, I, I'll come to that, right? It will come step by step. What it causes, we'll come to it. So if ASD, right, most common, this tetralogy of fellow or the TOF, right, this is most common. You must know this definitely with all 1, 2, 3, 4, even the plus 5 of that ASD. You must know this. Because it is most common, 50 to 70 percent of congenital heart disease, you will find the cases of this tetralogy of fellow. 50 to 70 percent. It means whatever the other things which we are. Yeah, I will cover everything, right? Just keep patience one by one. I will keep on telling uh, that how it occurs. Because otherwise, if I uh, will start answering all those questions in between, it will break the link. Right, so keep patience. Everything would come that why it occurs and what can be done to prevent it. Everything okay. So, coming back to this, that 50 to 70 percent of the congenital heart disease they are TOF. It means this is a big number, and 10 percent of all the congenital defects of the body again, a big number, right? In heart, they are 50 to 70 percent. Why it occurs, right? Why actually it occurs? Now, see, these are the things where there has to be something at a root level. There has to be some problem at a root level, right? And one of the things is this is what is called as the chromosome 21. Now, you know that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? 23 pairs of chromosome. 23rd pair that is the sex hormone. Uh, sex chromosome and the 22 up to that 1 to 22 they are carrying all the various types of genes right every there are genes and these genes they are carrying some specific function okay so over here it is the chromosome number 22 which we are talking about now one chromosome it has got the millions and millions and millions of possible all those pairs. So here to be very precise, this is 22 q 11.2. Now you will say that what exactly it is. Right? This is a sort of address. This is that specific address that a gene which is present over here, if that is deleted, so in that case it will lead to tetralogy of fallot. Now, now what are we talking about? What we are saying is, you pick up the 22nd number of chromosome, okay, and, and in that, there is a long arm and then there is a short arm. So, when we say Q, to this Q is our long arm, right? The Q is long arm. Then we have got 1, 1, dot, 2. So, this portion, this one, it is called as region, right? When we'll be learning these genetics and everything in depth, right? we can go into extensive details of this. But this is just to give you the understanding that how the things are divided. So the way there is a city, then there is an area, and then there is a society, and then there is a house, right? So that way, everything is very precisely located. Whether it is electronics or or it is like human and human body. The way you are watching me, right? So all of you are connected on internet. But currently, all of you are uniquely identified by your IP address and MAC address, right? That is how technically you are. So that's why everyone in the world can be very precisely located. Same way over here, every genes, every genes, it has got the address. So there is like, you can say, that if the Q is, is a city, right, then, then region 1, that is the area, and this another one, that is what is called as the band, right, band 1, and then this is the sub band, sub band. So we have region 1, band 1, sub band number 2, and this is a very small portion. Actually, this is a very small portion. Small means still it is having about 1.5 to 3 million. Yeah, 1.5 to 3 million 
base pairs over here base pairs so much and and when these are deleted this will lead to the what's called as the the george syndrome right when we'll be discussing the george syndrome in depth at that time we'll see that how this this particular thing will affect thymus and this parathyroid glands and what really happens but this is what is called as the micro deletion right you might say that so many are deleted yes micro deletion is when the deletion is less than 5 million right when it is less than 5 million so then it is called as the micro deletion okay so that's the D D George syndrome in which these congenital things they develop so it is not so that only tetralogy of fella even even will when we'll see some other conditions say for example transposition of great vessel again in that also same thing would come because this particular gene is controlling this entire system right now let's see this right before before watching this watch this right just watch the shoes only right so focus i need to tell you right so focus only on this and to be precise just focus on this much okay all right this is boot okay same thing over here here it is this is the x-ray image of tetralogy of fun looks like boot this is what is called as the boot shaped heart sign right it's also called as the core and sabot in french that's what is called as the clog shaped heart clog means nothing but this is clog such shoe right those females when they wear that sandal type of thing that's what is called as the clog now how this clog or how this boot it actually develops see it has got three component one the upper part right is by pulmonary trunk so that upper part is by pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk the second portion the toe of boot this toe right this toe this is by upward pointing cardiac apex so what happens that when it enlarges right so when the right ventricle enlarges again you remember this right the way we we form the heart right that it it goes like this and it rotates so your interior surface right the interior surface it is formed by the right ventricle when right ventricle enlarges so it actually tilts the left ventricle's cardiac apex upwards right so this is what really is happening which forms like a toe and then this entire round shape right this round shape this round shape that is by right ventricle hypertrophy so this gives what's called as the boot shaped now now this is very precise these are like what's called as the spot diagnosis spot diagnosis so you see it and immediately you say yes it is this right you'll be watching several such x-rays now once i have explained i'm erasing all these marks and then try to appreciate that see how it is looking different as compared to your normal heart right normally when you were watching you were never watching this edge so prominently right you were not watching this edge so prominently the normal heart was looking something like this right something like this that's how the normal heart was looking like right but over here see the protrusion right see how it is it is giving you the image now so do remember certain images right into your mind that that's how it looks like boot shaped now here is 
for the further diagnosis right when we go for angiography it's not so that angiography how to do it well that's the entire procedure right that is the diagnostic radiography but over here the images when you watch you should be able to appreciate that what exactly is happening first thing first what what is coming into into our mind over here is that this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle and when they the dye is mixing between both of them no doubt about it we are dealing with ventricular septal defect right ventricular septal defect and then this is the ascending aorta correct over here also this is right ventricle this is left ventricle and then we have got the ventricular along with this overriding of aorta can you see this thing this see the aorta aorta should be really be appearing from here right just from the left ventricle but this aorta is appearing like this see sorry is appearing like this see okay now can you can you see it properly so it is overriding right it is overriding it is going into the so obviously the blood from right ventricle will also be pushed into the aorta ascending aorta right see that's the overriding so here is what we see a large vsd and the overriding aorta these are the two understandings right very conceptual this is the important concept that's what we watch okay regarding the ecg what do we see we see right ventricular hypertrophy whenever there is right ventricular hypertrophy first thing first what you will see is right axis deviation and you know it so well how to see that thing on the ecg about right axis deviation similarly there is right atrial enlargement which will occur at a later stage right because of the pressure back pressure of the right ventricle so yes this is where we'll see even the right atrial enlargement and that's what where we'll see that biphasic wave more than one small segment and this is classically seen in v1 because v1 is watching it straight done right? so these are the indirect signs how patient would really come symptoms the amount of pulmonary blood flow it will play a major role very very important thing it depends upon how much is the stenosis right let's zoom let's just watch this is our right ventricle and this is the exit of the right ventricle and from here the pulmonary trunk is going out if this stenosis is not much right if it is minor then where the problem is right blood would simply go there might not be even right ventricular hypertrophy because the pressure is not getting mounted so in that case blood will trickle into the pulmonary trunk and then it will go all the way fine and in case if there is vsd also but if the pressure in the right ventricle is not rising right there is say this is left ventricle even if there is presence of ventricular septal defect but the pressure is not rising so in such case this won't be right to left shunt it would be left to right shunt because pressure in the left side is high so blood will go like this right no cyanosis even though there is tof tetralogy of fellow but no it is not happening because it depends upon this point so this is a very very important point the amount of pulmonary blood flow will play a very major role in the symptoms okay decreased exercise tolerance due to systemic desaturation right now when this is stenosed more so in that case via vst the blood would be shifted on the opposite side now the system is having mixed blood so obviously there would be decreased exercise tolerance right they will show a sign of heart failure definitely because now everything this this is the mixed blood which is getting circulated everywhere and slowly and gradually it will lead to what's called as the fluid overload fluid overload and from the from the baby's perspective 
poor feeding, poor weight gain, right? Because no possibility that, that uh, enough amount of oxygen is not reaching. Tachypnea. Tachypnea is abnormal rapid breathing without cyanosis, right? And then it is called as the pink TOF. As such, cyanosis should be there. But still, when, when this stenosis is not very much, yeah, blood would go over here. But it would be less. But still, nothing happens till the requirement is high. The moment this stenosis keeps on increasing, this pink will turn into blue. Okay. Some children who can walk, right, they will do frequent squatting. Frequent squats. Now, what squat is? When the baby bends his feet. Now, when this is done, there is a femoral artery, right? That There is a femoral artery. That femoral artery that was kinked, that is pressed. Now, that will lead to, it will increase pulmonary blood flow relatively because systemic venous blood and the artery, there is, there is increased systemic resistance, right? So, femoral artery and the venous, they both are compressed. So, there would be increased resistance. See how logical it is and then that, those children, they will be doing it without knowing. See, what exactly are they trying to do? Right? See, here it is. This is aorta. Right? Pressure is high over here. That's why it, the blood is getting pumped from right side to left side. Right? We know now that there is obstruction. There is, there is stenosis. If we increase the pressure over here, if we increase the resistance on the left side, so obviously this will become more. So in that case, the shift of the blood, this CO2 blood which is coming and disturbing us, that would be reversed. That would be reversed. So in that case, we'll be getting the pure blood only. Right? We'll be getting the pure blood only. And that then we are happy. So that's how it is managed. Such kids... Right. What they will do? They will do this squatting. So there is increased systemic resistance. Increased systemic resistance will increase the pressure into the left ventricle. When left ventricle pressure is increased, so it will not allow the right ventricle to send the blood because it again it is giving that resistance. Right? When the blood from right ventricle is not coming onto the left ventricle, so it means that CO2 component is not coming and it is happy here. Right, so that's one. There can be hypoxic spell, or it is called as the hypersynotic spell. Suddenly, sudden occurrence of severe cyanosis, deep and rapid respiration, irritability, and then the lethargy. Again, this is purely because of hypoxia. Now, there is just there is a difference between hypoxemia. and hypoxia. What hypoxemia is that when the oxygen drops in blood, oxygen concentration, it drops in the blood. It is called as hypoxemia. How will it affect? Now this decreased oxygen, right, that would be going into the entire body. Now there are certain areas in, in the body which are too sensitive. Say for example, Two organs, heart and brain, they have got zero tolerance, right? Lethargy means, lethargy means they feel tired, they feel tired, right? That is what is called as lethargy, they feel tired. So, hypoxia is lack of, lack of oxygen in the tissues. So, whenever there is any insult to heart or brain and in case if the tissue dies, then it is gone forever. If anything happens to liver, no problem, it will proliferate. If anything happens to spleen, no problem, it will proliferate. Splenomegaly can occur, hepatomegaly can occur, right? They will increase in its size. Everything is possible, but in heart and brain, if anything goes wrong, sorry. Right? So, that is 
hypoxia, right, which is the after effect of this hypoxemia. Hypoxemia means decreased oxygen in blood. And then in hypoxia, we are dealing with a specific tissue. So that's why whenever there is any heart attack, First thing, watch, what will you watch is, we'll, we'll discuss this thing day after tomorrow when we'll be dealing with the MI, myocardial infarction. But first thing, what you watch is, say, if there is left ventricular involvement, right? I'll not draw, I'll just explain. If there is left ventricular in, uh, infarction, that means left ventricular muscles, they are dying. If they are dying, what is coming out of it? Aorta. Now that, that left ventricle is not having that enough power to pump the blood into the aorta. Everyone will be fine, but that brain is crying because brain is not getting enough oxygen. Brain is not getting enough oxygen. It will lead to, first thing, cerebral hypoxia, right? Now there is a very limited time, very limited time before the blood should be coming back with full oxygen. If that time is lost, even if rest of the body survives, that brain would, won't survive, right? Brain won't survive. And then there will be, when you do MRI, or you'll be, you'll be watching severe hypoxic changes, right? Those nuclei, they'll start dying. So even if rest of the body functions, they are fine, but practically it would be like a vegetable life. Right? So this is, this is what really happens when patients, they slip in coma, it is due to this reason. Cerebral hypoxia is that dangerous. Okay. So typically this occurs around 2 to 4 months of age. That's the reason that tetralogy of filler, if, if it is not handled in the initial stages, right, so then such patients, they don't even survive long. And if hypoxic spells last for a long duration without treatment, it can result in seizure. Neuro, neuronal involvement, hypoxic brain damage and even death. So this is what you get in your patients. Right? These are, can you see, these are all clubbing of, clubbing, this is called, this is in the normal nail bed. Right? That's the normal nail bed. Like this. This is our normal nail. But when it comes to clubbing, right? so then this is a finger. The clubbing is like this, this. So because of this peripheral pooling over here, the nail bed, they would be bent like this. See, it will occur in hands as well as in the feet. Cyanosis in lips and fingers and clubbing in fingers and toes. That's what we see. Diagnosis is always stamped by echo. Now say this is echo. And let's see what we get over here. The moment you say it, you will be knowing it. That this is left ventricle, this is right ventricle. And then there is an absolute clear gap which you are watching. This is atrial septal defect. Right? So... And see, that's the aorta, right? That's the aorta. Okay. Regarding the treatment, cardiac repair surgery as soon as possible. No option. Hardly such patients reach adulthood without surgery because there is no possibility. And what would you like to do? Say, out of four things, we saw that in Tetralogy of Fallot, just for the revision, that there is pulmonary stenosis. Because of pulmonary stenosis, one has got right ventricular hypertrophy. When there is right ventricular hypertrophy, there is an added element that is ventricular septal defect. Because this nature itself tells, ke, okay, send the blood on other route so that patient survives. And then on top of it, to make the condition, say, there is overriding of aorta. These are the four things. And then when you want to make it pentalogy, you will be adding one more substance and that is AST. Right? You start correcting things in the following way. Pulmonary constriction is relaxed. You 
take care of this. And then ventricular septal defect is corrected. How will you correct that ventricular septum, right? Remember, we talked about you'll use Amplatzer occluder, right? And there was a difference in the Amplatzer occluder in case of ASD and VSD. Because in VSD, ventricular septum is thicker and it's both the sides, they will be of the same size and this would be thicker, right? That was not the case in case of ASD. This middle portion is thinner and one side is smaller, okay? When this thing occurs, pulmonary constriction is relaxed, so that means now pressure is released. So automatically right ventricle will come back to normal. Right ventricle hypertrophy resolves. Overriding of aorta, in case if it is present, we have to correct it. Because this is a variable thing. Not every case you will be getting this overriding of aorta. So if it is present, yes, it has to be corrected uh, during the repair surgery along with Move on to the next portion and that is transposition of great arteries. One a big advantage of learning congenital heart disease is that by the time the session would be over, you will be master of the entire anatomy. Because same thing is getting repeated so many times and, and in fact, when you know the abnormalities, so normal thing is automatically remembered. Now see, how how interesting things transposition of great arteries right we are dealing with now arteries only two arteries only two arteries we are talking about aorta and we are talking about pulmonary trunk because there cannot be any bigger arteries than these things right they both are super boss huge one <laughs> They switch position. Switching the position. Right. Let's draw it. And you will find that how funny it is. Though I means medical it is not funny, but well, can can it really occur? But yes, it can occur. Right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. What if right ventricle is giving output? in aorta and left ventricle is giving output in pulmonary trunk how can this thing happen well it can really happen there was truncus arteriosus and that truncus arteriosus here there was the right ventricle and this was the left ventricle and previously they both were opening into a common chamber but then the septum developed in a cross and that's how the left ventricle started opening into aorta and this right ventricle started opening into the pulmonary trunk, right? And this in between was called as the aortopulmonary septum, which rotated. That's why aorta and pulmonary, they are lying on each other. Right? So, See, that is that amplex part that was explained in the first. So, you have to watch the CHD part 1 in which the images are also shown. So, once you will see that, you will get the whole idea. Right? Amplexer. It is the amplexer. Okay. So, transposition of great arteries in this case, what really happens is, from aorta, the blood will go to body. From body, right, it will go to superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and it will go to right atrium and then via this right ventricle. One circulation. The second circulation. Second circulation from pulmonary trunk, it will go to lungs and then from lungs, it will go to this pulmonary veins and it will go back to left atrium. Practically speaking, what we are dealing with one circulation and this is the second circulation. They both are independent circulation and that is what is called as the parallel circulation. When the parallel circulation occurs, the survival is impossible. True? Because it is the same blood. They both are now completely separate. That's what is called as the atrioventricular concordance 
that there is no problem between atria and ventricle. They both are okay. That's the atria. Right? That's the atria. This is the ventricular. Concordance means consistency. They both are okay. But there is discordance in ventricular arterial system. The trouble is over here between the ventricle and the arteries which are coming out. So that's the point of trouble. So that's what is called as the atrioventricular. I'm sorry. That's what is called as the ventriculo arterial discordance. Ventriculo articular discordance. Right? So here from right atrium to right ventricle to aorta. The right atrium to right ventricle to aorta. And then this is left atrium to left ventricle to pulmonary arteries. Both are parallel, right? This is what is called as the transposition of great arteries. Now, in this, there are two types. One is the DTGA and second is the LTGA. Right now, we are talking about a commonest one that is the dextro-TGA or the DTGA, right? We'll look at it LTGA later, right? But first, let's understand this. Now, see, this thing can occur in several ways. Transposition of great arteries it is combined with some other things also. And what can it be? And see, this is like how nature is working to solve the things by itself. Whenever there is complete TGA, right, with intact ventricular septum, so this is in almost 50% of the cases. This IVS means intact ventricular septum, right, that is one. There can be another variation, complete TGA with VST, ventricular septal defect, or it can be ventricular septal defect and pulmonary stenosis. So this is how it can really represent type 1, type 2 and the type 3. So what, what can, how patient, if, if we say that over here it is almost impossible that patient would survive, right? that fetus won't be able to survive because from where will it get the blood if that's the question so then how that fetus has survived till the birth we came to know about this when the patient has taken birth but then how that fetus survived for so many months here it is that's again our heart okay and left it i'm sorry right atrium, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. The trouble is over here and here. Right. So from here, that blood was coming from the maternal side and it was going to right ventricle. But no, at that time in fetal life, right, in fetal life, Blood was not going out of right ventricle, it was going via, right, you must remember, it was going via what was over there, foramen ovale, right, it was going on to the left hand side via foramen ovale, so that's the first point, via foramen ovale, that wall, right, because why there is, say, high pressure over here? Say from left ventricle, the, it is getting circulated into the body and over here, lungs too, they are not working at all. So there is no resistance from, so there is high resistance from the lungs because they are into the state of hypoxia, right? They are like drowned. So there is no point in sending any blood to this right ventricle. But though if some blood was going via right ventricle, then there was something more. And what was that? That it was the connectivity between pulmonary trunk and aorta and we call that thing as ductus arteriosus, right, ductus arteriosus. Now over here also, take it this way, over here, this is TGA, transposition. So from right ventricle, it is the aorta which is coming out, correct, and from Left ventricle, it is the pulmonary trunk which is coming out. True. Rest of the things, they are all fine. So from right atrium, if the blood comes, when it comes into right ventricle, 
right? Think it this way. We are talking about fetal life. But before that only, there is a shunt which has already developed and it will go from right atrium to left atrium. From left atrium, it is going to left ventricle. And even if it is going to left ventricle, now this is pulmonary trunk. No problems. There is a ductus arteriosus. So once again, that blood shifts over here and from here it goes into the body. How nice. It is because of the presence of ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale, both the systems, they were working with each other. Though they both, though both the circulations, they are parallel. True? They are parallel. But as soon as the baby takes birth, right, this thing is closed, this thing is closed. Because of lack of prostaglandins, this ductus arteriosus, it becomes ligament ligamentum arteriosum right it is blocked this foramen lungs are now working the moment lungs are working so pressure builds and this foramen ovale is closed foramen ovale closed ductus arteriosus closed and immediately both the systems they become independent now there is no one who can really talk between right side and left side true that's where the trouble is so here we learned two hemodynamics one hemodynamic in fetal life and second hemodynamics that is after birth. So what will you do in such case? You have to work fast because such patients they can't survive. And actually by doing the transvaginal ultrasonography you can come to know about this condition even before birth. So you are very sure you know it that the moment this will take birth what you have to do. See here. See, this is what, what information we get. From in, in this is in right ventricle, we inject the dye, and when we inject the dye, see it is completely restricted, completely restricted to right ventricle, right? So this is a complete TGA. Why we are calling it TGA? Because this is so nicely going into the aorta, right ventricle taking the aorta. So this is complete TGA. But is there so any VSD? No, VSD is not there. So we'll call it intact ventricular septum, right? So that is IVS, intact ventricular septum. So we tried the same thing onto the left ventricle. So in left ventricle also, it is purely restricted to left ventricle. And see, just by the looks at it, you'll say this is pulmonary trunk and this is right and the left pulmonary arteries, main pulmonary artery. Perfect. Right. So this is complete TGA with IVS. So IVS means there is no VSD, no ventricular septal defect. Now you can see it fully. Well, this is an excellent thing to watch. So many things, they are together. Right? Let's see multiple things. Starting with the first one. Over here, that is right ventricle. You inject the dye into right ventricle and immediately you see that this dye is going into other chamber also. See, it is spilling into, into other chamber. So one thing is clear that we are dealing with first, that is VSD. There is ventricular septal defect. Right? Once you understand it, then I'll erase all the markings so that you can see it very crisply. So first is the ventricular septal defect. Now, as we are in putting it into right ventricle, it is going into C arch of aorta. So that means we are dealing with complete TGA, transposition of great arteries. Right. So that is the second one. The third is, I'll just zoom it.
Yes. Can you really appreciate? Say this is the, this is what is this aorta, and it is narrowing over here. Yesterday we learned this thing that that narrowing of aorta is what is called as the coarctation of aorta. It is called as the coarctation of aorta. So that's what narrowing we see over here. So that is coarctation of aorta. The fourth thing which you watch is that if you see this aorta, that's the beautiful caliber, right? Big one. And suddenly over here, it is so thin, so thin, so small, right? See, this is going good. That is the subclavian branch. That is also good, that carotid, right? But this, what about this arch? Arch is so thin, very thin arch, true? This is what is called as the hypoplasia. Of aortic arch. That's our fourth finding. That is our fourth finding. Okay. And the fifth part is if we see that there is a clear difference, a clear difference, right? That is something which is connecting aorta along with pulmonary trunk. So this is patent ductus arteriosus. Right, this is patent ductus arteriosus. So that is the fifth one. Right. So these are the five findings which we'll be getting over here. I just remove this so that you can watch it without any overlapping. See, right? Now you can watch it. So especially for the revision, what you can do is that when you watch this video again, right, you can just stop the video over here and have a look at all the components. So we have complete TGA. There is ventricular septal defect. There is severe coarctation of aorta. There is hypoplasia of aortic arch and the patent ductus arteriosus. Right. This is once again the eco ascending aorta is from right ventricle and pulmonary trunk is coming out of left ventricle. Right. So here unoxygenated blood from super vena cava inferior vena cava right atrium to right ventricle to aorta to systemic circulation this is one and then oxygenated blood from pulmonary to left atrium ventricle to pulmonary arteries that is pulmonary circulation basically same what we talked about parallel circulation instead of normal circulation which is in series right this is parallel circulation so without mixing of unoxygenated unoxygenated blood patient develops severe cyanosis from where he will get the blood from where he will get the oxygen there is hypoxemia we talked about it less oxygen concentration into the blood and then there is metabolic acidosis Right. Metabolic acidosis, this is like an electrolyte imbalance, severe electrolyte imbalance. When there is problem in the acid base components and in such cases, so it can occur because of so many reasons. Right. Say when there is increased acid production, when there is decrease in the bicarb level or when the kidneys Right? They are not functioning properly and they are not eliminating all those acidic components. So it can lead to metabolic acidosis. And patient will die soon after birth, mostly within one week. Right, right ventricular hypertrophy and left ventricular, say, atrophy. Right? Because left ventricle is practically not doing anything. Not much problem in fetal life because of the presence of foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus. In case if you want to do something, ventilator support and most important is the switch operation. Switch operation is when you really do the corrective surgery so that from right ventricle it is the pulmonary trunk which is come which is shifted and from the left ventricle it is the aorta. 
Now, by the time you prepare the patient for surgery, you can give the patient right, prostaglandins. Prostaglandins. Why prostaglandins? Prostaglandin, which is released by placenta, right, it's one of the function is keep the ductus arteriosus open. Am I right? right? That was the reason that whenever the, the moment the placenta is taken out, prostaglandin stops, prostaglandin stops, so ductus arteriosus shrinks and then it gets converted to ligamentum arteriosum. So if you keep on giving the prostaglandin, so it will keep the ductus arteriosus open and it is that ductus arteriosus which can be a lifesaver because that would be the only connectivity between both of them, right, right side and the left side, right. So that's why this is just something which can be given. And how the X-ray would look like? The X-ray would look like this, right? This shape. And that's what is called as the egg on a string appearance. So it is like as if this whole thing is an egg and which has been suspended by a string. So that is what is called as egg on a string appearance. Yeah, this is levo TGA. Levo transposition of great arteries. Now here ventricle shift position right how strange this is rare though this is a bit rare but here ventricles they switch position along with the valves so this is also called as the congenitally corrected TGA congenitally corrected TGA I'll draw it for the easy understanding say it is it is like this let me draw it here Watch carefully. Right atrium, left atrium, here right ventricle, left ventricle, but switch. Now, this is left ventricle, and this is right ventricle. And this thing occurs along with the valves. Okay? So, along with valves, they go. And so, left ventricle would say that I will take this thing to pulmonary trunk and from here it is the aorta. So you know pulmonary trunk and the aorta they are in its original position because normally to over here you get the left and here you get the right right so everything is fine but here aorta. but here only the ventricle switch their position. So it means the blood would go, how the blood would go? The blood would go from right atrium to left ventricle to pulmonary trunk, fine. From pulmonary trunk, right, it will go to lungs. From lungs, it will go to those pulmonary veins. It will go to left atrium to right ventricle to aorta, it will go into the body. And then it will go to SVC. Well, things are good, right? It will keep on moving. Right. So here it is like asynotic. It will work like a normal heart. Because see, it is that's why it is called as the congenital congenitally corrected TGA. It is congenitally corrected. But then there is something different. And that is that the valves which are over here, those valves, they are not made for this, right? Say for example, the mitral valve. Right from the beginning when the, this, when the mitral valve is made, it is a tough valve, right? Because it knows that it has to handle large amount of pressure. The tricuspid valve, tricuspid valve is trained that you don't have to be a commando, right? Because you will not be handling high pressure. But now these ventricles, they have switched their position and they took their valves also along with it. And as this is a high pressure system, this side, right? This side is a high pressure system. Why it should be? Because it has to push the pump, push the blood into the entire body. So this valve, this particular valve, let's see in the color, this particular valve is, is not mitral. Now this is a tricuspid valve. 
This is a tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve was never made for such pressure. Nothing would help, nothing would happen initially, but later on this valve would give way. Tricuspid handling high pressure, it will lead to valve failure. Right? And this thing is very common if expecting mother is having PEM, protein energy malnutrition, diabetes, alcoholic, if she is 40 plus or infected with rubella. In all these cases, the chances of such condition, they increase. The next one is the truncus arteriosus. Now this is relatively easy. That's the truncus arteriosus in fetal life, right? It divides into two, two parts and one is the aorta and second is the pulmonary trunk. What if, if this thing is not happening and the whole thing remains as one only? So if there is no division, it would like a just single large artery which is present, single large artery, right? And mixed blood is going into body and lungs. Yeah, it would be like, got it? Because when I, when I draw it like this, say, same our figure and we draw it, but previously it was like this, right? This was the pulmonary trunk and this was our aorta. Now, nothing like that. So, this thing goes away, this thing goes away. There is a common, just a common output, right? So, if both of them, they will be dumping the common blood. So that's the right ventricle, that's the left ventricle. From here CO2 and from here O2 and it is the mixed blood which is going, right? It is getting dumped into the body. Simple, mixed blood in body and lungs. Now even though, after some time, even if the situation is something like this, that say from right ventricle, right? Let's, let's draw it in the real anatomy style. So when it is like this, right? And, and over here it develops into the aorta and from here it develops into the form of that uh, pulmonary trunk, right? But still what? Still, this was the common area where the blood has mixed. So now that mixed blood from both these chambers, right? It is mixed blood which is going in aorta, mixed blood which is going into pulmonary trunk. So in Simple words, it is the mixed blood which is going everywhere. Rubella is an infection. So what complications? Cardiomegaly, heart becomes bigger, pulmonary hypertension and it can lead to say permanent lung damage. There can be respiratory problems, mixed blood is going. Arrhythmia, yes because it is same mixed blood which is getting supplied to heart. Wall regurgitation because of pressure imbalances, cyanosis few days after birth, yes, because it is again a mixed blood, more blood to lungs, less to body because high to low pressure system and that leads to fluid overload and the heart failure, right? This is uh, how it goes. Association, same what we talked about. It is this gene which is so important, right? So treatment surgical repair. We now move on to this final part, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, right? relatively less common, but it is congenital underdevelopment of the left heart. Only the left heart is underdeveloped. Now, in this case, when we say like this, right, this is left ventricle now, for some reason, right, this remains small. So, congenital underdevelopment of left heart. Primary congenital heart defect and it may reduce flow through left ventricle to left outflow tract. That's what we talked about. This is reduced. Affects other heart malformation. Underdeveloped left ventricle and ascending aorta. So that's the key word. Aortic or mitral valves, they are affected, narrow or absent. Right? Valves are absent. So if untreated, it leads to left-sided heart failure because nothing is going out. This is so narrowed that this left ventricle 
is not allowing any blood to go out right it is narrowed very small amount is going out leads to shock cardiogenic shock which is a physiology uh, topic right there are several types of shock but in a simple words it leads to death because the heart is failing ASD or PDA they are required for postnatal survival it is necessary how why it is necessary because once again we draw our heart and we draw it like this and this is the left ventricle this is like a small thin our aorta but if the pulmonary trunk is there then there would be connectivity like this which is like a patent ductus arteriosus so then this blood though this blood will be having carbon dioxide but it will go trickle and it will go into the body and it will continue at least the survival would be possible right hypoplasia means decreased growth right that is decreased growth similarly asd if there is asd so blood would be shunted over here right as this is a high pressure so it would be shunted and it will go like this respiratory distress poor feeding failure to thrive that is failure to grow left sided heart failure right and prenatal ultrasound chest x ray right right ventricular hypertrophy and surgical repair is needed and finally this is total anomalous pulmonary venous return right it looks so big total anomalous pulmonary venous return so here start visualizing pulmonary veins right anomalous connection of pulmonary veins in the heart and it occurs during first 8 weeks because that's where those pulmonary veins they were developing right. so how many variations whatever you think of supracardiac in which pulmonary veins open into brachiocephalic vein right or superior vena cava so pulmonary veins which are getting that good oxygen blood right they are opening into svc so once again it is getting mixed right respiratory distress that is simply because of respiratory distress is because of the mixed blood which is going everywhere right and the tissues they are not getting the required oxygen concentration so there would be severe respiratory distress right because this is like mixed blood it is going into the entire circulation this is another variant cardiac variant in which pulmonary veins they are opening into coronary sinus or right atrium right right watch it that right atrium that's where those pulmonary veins are opening then infra diaphragmatic when they are opening into portal or hepatic veins so obviously in this third one right it will lead to what's called as the cardio that hepatomegaly liver would be enlarged and then there can be some mixed variant this is incompatible with life right they won't survive simply they they won't survive because the blood oxygenated blood is not going into the systemic circulation subject to if there is foramen ovale so in that case see this is right atrium that somehow whether right directly or indirectly the oxygenated blood is coming over here right and then there is foramen ovale so it would be pumped into left atrium and then from here it will go into the body so in that case this foramen ovale is life survivor right survives in case foramen ovale is not there no problem this blood will go into left it um, i'm sorry right right ventricle right ventricle and then from right ventricle pulmonary trunk and then left atrium to left ventricle right there is aorta but then if there is patent ductus arteriosus so in that case this particular blood will go here 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 and from here once again it will go into the body and the patient would survive right so these are like the survival 
So severity of symptoms again depends upon presence presence and the degree of obstruction, right? Cyanosis, tachypnea, tachycardia, difficulty in breathing, failure to grow, recurrent respiratory infection because everywhere there is a mixed blood. And liver would be enlarged when it is opening into that portal system. Chest x-ray that shows <laughs> that shows snowman sign. This is called as the snowman. Right? Christmas was nearby and this is like a snowman. So over here dilated superior vena cava, pulmonary veins, right? That goes like this and then this. So if you if you really do it like this, right? So that's like a snowman. It is those enlarged veins. Let's see if I just remove this. Right? They really form this top portion. This top portion. Right? They form the head. And dilated right atrium, it forms this body. So that's what is called as the snowman. Snowman's sign. All those will lead to volume loading might show left atrium with no connecting veins right here also there is right ventricular hypertrophy so you will see right axial say shift or deviation and echocardio is always the is always its diagnostic thing in vascular malformation say three types one is kaposi sarcoma hemangioma and angiosarcoma wherever the sarcoma is so it means they are malignant, malignant. These are the malignant tumors of endothelial cells. So we are dealing with only the vascular component. So because it was coming in on the way, so that's why I added just two, three minutes for this. Kaposi, it is classically seen in those patients where there is immune system, right? Immune system is suppressed. So especially in cases of SAHIV or so those transplant cases when the immunity has to be lowered right it is very much common hemangioma which is which is benign tumor right which is a benign tumor of endothelial cells and finally arteriovenous malformation what happens is that this is the artery it divides 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 right it forms what is called as the capillary bed and then they start combining together and then they form the vein venous plexus so they form the vein this is what is called as the capillary bed now sometimes there is if there is a single connection there is a single connection between this arteries and veins so that is what is called as the arterio venous fistula right that is absent capillary bed and is it bad well form most often in brain spinal cord and the lungs right and if they rupture they can cause neurological symptoms right and later they can even go for the heart failure so this was about the congenital heart disease part two right Tomorrow, we'll be talking about the pharmacological aspect of cardiology. Thank you so much. Oh, this is the pen. Okay, so big thank you. <laughs> right? Thank you so much. And we meet tomorrow. Bye-bye. Uh, you mean to say lecture series 2? Mm, when we are starting lectures 2. Yeah, you mean to say the next series, no? Uh, say we... Today was day 8, right? Tomorrow we'll be discussing Pharmac. And then on the 10th day, we'll be discussing the myocardial infarction. Then there will be a gap of about say 1 or at, at the most 2 days. And then immediately we'll start. Right. So, I will definitely let you know uh, when we are starting. By tomorrow only, you will come to know. Thank you so much. <laughs>